All right. Uh, morning, folks. So I thought this might be quite interesting for everyone. This is fully, I'll, I fully admit, this is not a video that you probably need to know, but you might find it quite interesting. So I'm going to talk about and talk you through my process of putting together routines for clients and the thought that goes behind it. So there's quite a lot of thought that goes into writing a program, as they should be. And I recently saw Steve Shaw do this, and I thought it was quite a cool idea for a video. So I want to talk you through my process. So let's begin. Now, firstly, we start with the client. So I always start there. If we are creating a routine for a client, we start with the client. So my client is Jason. This is actually something I did this morning for him. And so if he's listening, hey, Jason, you're right. Um, now, a bit of background on him because you have to know your client. In general, Jason is a higher volume trainee. So you'll see throughout this video, there are strands of higher amounts of volume. He averages around about 15 sets per body part per week quite successfully. He has the work capacity and the willingness to do more. So he's a hard worker. He's young. He's well motivated. He can eat and sleep plenty and still has room to grow. He's still growing. So for somebody looking to gain muscle and strength, he's pretty much the ideal client. Like he's got a good attitude, uh, plenty of room to grow, and he's willing to put in the work and he can eat. So it's all good. And yeah, I added in there, lovely dude. And yeah, I speak about all my clients that way because they're all fantastic. So that's the general case study. That's who I'm working with. And that's what I have in my head when I'm creating this routine. So next up, what we do is, next thing is I decide on the volume per week. I think this is the most important thing. As I've discussed in the past, when it comes to volume, think of volume as the magnitude of stress that you're imposing onto your muscle. It's the biggest lever you can pull. So yes, we have to have intensity at a high level. There is an intensity threshold and anything below that, we're not gonna gain. So yes, we have to work hard, we get that. But how much hard work you do will correspond to the level of stimulus you put onto the muscle. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like this um, for match day. You need a ticket. Intensity is your ticket. So if you don't have the ticket, you don't get into the game. So if you don't work hard, you're not going to get any gains. Now, volume is what you do when you're in the game, is how you play. So yes, you're at the tournament, whatever it is. You've got the you've got the ticket. That's the intensity. Now, if you turn up and you, you get a last place award, maybe your volume wasn't too good. If you turn up and you win, then you had the right amount of volume. You see what I mean? That's the analogy. So volume is important because it's the magnitude of stress. Yes, intensity is the key factor, but volume decides on the magnitude of the stress. So for Jason, this block, I want to challenge him a little bit. So he's, he's still growing and I want to challenge him a little bit in, on the main areas. So chest, upper back, delts, quads, and hams. So if we have a look at this in a bit more to in a bit more detail. So he's averaging, he has in the past averaged about 15 sets per body part. I want to just bump that up a little bit. So he's doing, currently right now, he'll be doing about 18 for chest, upper back, quads, 15 for hams and delts, and biceps will be 12 and 12 for triceps. So in total, this gives us about 114 sets. Now, if we divide that by five sessions, which is what he wants to do, it gives us 22 sets. And I think you'll agree 22 sets per session is pretty reasonable, all right? It's not out of the ordinary. And for somebody like Jason, that's a very reasonable amount of work. So that's the first step. We've decided the volume per week, decided volume per body parts. So that's kind of where we start. And now we'll move on to the next step. Next step for me is what are the client's requirements? Now, Jason has requested a five day a week routine and he specifically requested a push pull legs upper lower, okay? A push pull legs upper lower is an unusual split. So I thought that is why this would make for a very good video. So this is roughly what a push pull legs upper lower looks like if you're not aware. So push day, you'll have chest, delts, triceps, pull day, back, probably some more delts and biceps the delts on the pull day will be more centered around probably side and rear, whereas on the push day, you could easily have a press in there. Legs, quads, hams, calves, and that's kind of just basically twice. Legs and lower are the same. And then the upper day is composed of a combination of the push and pull, which is chest, back, delts, bison, tries. 
So hopefully you're all kind of with me so far. All right, now this means in terms of frequency, we get quite a good degree of frequency for your body parts as well. So chest and back is hit twice. Bias and tries hit twice, which is nice. Pretty good level of frequency it means we can even out the volume because we're we're trying to do very relatively high volumes. Um, quads and hams hit twice. Delts hit three times, which I think is perfectly acceptable. That's an every upper body day, which is good. They're going to be hit anyway, so we'll add in some direct work and space out the volume. So that's currently where we're at. Now, next thing is to allocate the volume. So this is when people will start to switch off because it starts to get numerical and complicated, but it's important that this is done. The sessional volume should be allocated evenly. If you don't go through this process, you can have high amounts of volume on one day and low amounts on the other, and it all just look very uneven. So sessional volume should be allocated evenly so as not to overwhelm people. Now, we've already said we are looking to have on average about 22 sets per session. Now, my general inclination is do a little bit less for lower body, a little bit more for upper body to even out the stress because lower body sessions are inherently more fatiguing. So we have the volume a little bit lower. You can see here on the lower body days, they're around about the 20 to 19 mark. On the upper body days, they're about the 24 mark or 27 on that day. Now, this is generally the upper limits of volume per day that I would recommend. I generally prefer around about eight sets per body part per session. So where we're dipping into the 10 and 12 range, what we're going to do is we're going to use um, intensity techniques to facilitate some higher volumes to make sure we're getting good quality work in in a reasonable amount of time because that's important the quality of the work as well as the time to put in so they're both important so for those days where we are dipping up past significantly past eight sets like 12 for quads 10 for hamstrings we will be using some intensity techniques as you'll see later on so i've already got that in mind so that's roughly what the week is going to look like. And the, f the goal of this stage is to mostly make sure that no one day is particularly overwhelming. It's all a reasonable amount of work. For you guys who are watching this, you might think, oh, 24 is way too much for me. Fine. But then you would also not have allocated as much volume at the beginning either. You wouldn't be doing 18 sets per body part. So bear in mind in this example, it's appropriate for Jason. If I had somebody doing 12 sets per body part per week and that was what was appropriate for them, then this would be a lot less. So don't get hung up on this stage. I hope you, I just wanna, <laughs> I just wanna emphasize that point because I know YouTube well enough by now to, to know that some people will be sat there thinking, 24 is way too much for me. Calm yourself down, okay? <laughs> we wouldn't be at 24 if we didn't know that you, you responded well to that level of volume per week, okay? So this is appropriate for the client. In fact, I'm even gonna go back <laughs> to emphasize the point I'm even going to take it back to here. We would have much lower numbers at this stage if that was you. I, I've already preempted the comments. See, this is the teacher in me, I'm preempting these comments. So um, if you think that's too much volume for you, it probably is. And so these numbers will be lower and they would mean lower numbers moving forward. Okay, now that point is understood, let's move on. So next step is structuring the routine. And this is where we look at things like this. So. In general, I don't really like more than about six to eight exercises per day. If I can get away with six exercises per day, that's what I do. But six to eight is the absolute max. I think after that point, you're kind of dragging your feet and you're better off just doing more sets on that exercise because bear in mind, every exercise has its own energy recovery cost. You're having to put the weights away, pick up your things, move elsewhere potentially wait for a machine, all that kind of stuff, right? So you have to set up elsewhere. So doing that more than about six to eight times per session is a little bit too much. Now with Jason here, I've got him doing seven exercises per session, which I think is fine. So this stage, what I do is I allocate the number of exercise slots mostly. If you look at the middle column there, it says category. Now I think that is very important because I'm not married to any one exercise. I've added in some sample exercises here, which I know from Jason's history that he likes to do and he responds well to. However, I also note that Jason has said he's recently moved to a new gym and so he wants to try some new equipment, which is why we have the category here so he can change exercises whenever he wants to. So for example, you'll see the delt isolation I've left blank. He can 
use a machine that he has available at the gym. Also, let's say for the vertical press, instead of the standing press, he has a really good seated uh, shoulder press machine, like a hammer seated press, whatever. He can add that in. I encourage him to change exercises and he has full autonomy and individuality over these. I've added in some suggested exercises, which we would both probably agree he's quite good at, but I also encourage him to individualize every single block. So we can add those sets in and add, sorry, I can add those exercises in based on the new equipment he has available. Now, the next thing, if you cast your eyes over to the right hand side is the working sets. So you'll notice most working sets are about three, but some of them are quite high. Some of them are six. Now, there's a reason for that. The reason is we are trying to accommodate the volume we specified earlier. Now, when the sets run very high, my plan is to incorporate some intensity techniques. So things like, well, you'll see in a second, but intensity techniques allowing you to do more volume with a good degree of quality in less time. So we are still satisfying the requirements for additional volume because people need varying amounts of volume. You know, some people need more, some people need less. And depending on your depending on your training advancement, you might need more, you might need less. As we've discussed in the past, I think intermediates tend to need the most and it goes down again as your advanced trainee. So Jason is firmly in that intermediate category. So for him, his volume requirements are relatively high right now. So we can use intensity techniques to make sure he's getting the right amount of volume in. So hopefully that's all clear. Next step. Next step, we decide on the set types. Now, in general, my preference is straight sets. So for most people, the majority of what they do will just be regular straight sets. So sets of five to 10, a couple of minutes rest, you know, whatever else, right? Just do your sets as regular sets. I think that's probably the best way to do the work. Now, when intensity techniques are important are for a couple of main reasons. Firstly, for variety. I think it's important to have variety. But secondly, when time constraints are a problem. So Jason wants to work out five days a week. Now, I don't really want him to be in the gym for longer than an hour have to slim down the time on some of those training sessions. So every single one of these training sessions will have some type of intensity technique where he's basically using less rest to execute the same amount of work. So that's where I introduce intensity techniques. For a lot of you, you, you probably never will use them. Like again, if you're sat there thinking, ah, oh, it's too much volume for me, calm down. You won't be using too much volume, it's too complicated. It's not for you then you won't be using intensity techniques. This is to facilitate the higher amounts of volume that people might want to use. And I guess there's a third reason, they're fun. <laughs> they're good to get a pump. So for Jason, I'm going to utilize my reps and drop sets to add in additional volume, which is still going to be quality volume, but in a quicker format, okay? So let's move on to the next stage and see what this actually looks like. So intensity techniques added in, here we go, all right. So that makes it a bit bigger. Here we go. So you'll see here, I've very liberally added in intensity techniques so as to reduce the time per session. So if you look at session one, bench press for three regular sets, machine chest press for three sets, cable crossover, he's actually going to do two sets just as a drop set. So he's going to warm up, do a main set, drop it down, do another set. That that is his two sets. So he's literally going to be on the cable crossover machine for maybe five minutes, and then he's going to move on. Standing press, three sets. His delta isolation, three sets. Close grip bench, three sets. And then the skull over, I'm going to have him doing two my rep sets. Now, a my rep set, as I've explained at the top here for him, is one sort of large activation set and four mini sets. Now, if I was doing this with you, I would explain that in detail to you in a client check-in. But for now, all you need to know is two my rep sets, don't take very long, probably take about five minutes. And that is, he's accumulated roughly the equivalent of six sets. And then the same is for the pull day, liberally adding in drop sets, liberally adding in my rep sets to enable him to get some good quality work in, but more volume in less time. So this is a great way to facilitate more volume. So again, just to emphasize, really the only reason that we use these advanced techniques is to get in more volume for clients who need them. Generally, my preference is regular straight sets. Um, <laughs> I almost have a, a fear that this entire video is going to be 
signposted by questions about the intensity techniques, they're not that big a deal. Hopefully, all you're seeing is the process of actually creating the routine. All right, next up. So there we go. Um, so just to kind of summarize the process, um, we started with the total volume. So how much volume do we want to do per body part per week? That's the main thing to start with. Everything else comes from that. So whether you're wanting to do lower volume, whether you want to do higher volume, everything else is arises out of that. Now, if you want to do a bit of higher volume, but you don't have the time, then as you know, you have intensity techniques you can utilize. But in general, you'll you'll pretty much know where you sit on the grand scheme of things, like which side of the fence you sit on. Now, after that, we allocate the days of the week and the split. So whether it's upper lower, whether it's a push pull legs upper lower, whether it's a body part split, whatever it is. And we base that mostly on what's best for the client, but also based on the client's input. So Jason really wanted uh, a push pull legs upper lower for this block. So that's what we're doing. Now, after that, you allocate the volume to each body part per day. So this is very important because you have to make sure each session is relatively even and it's workable, it's doable. So as you saw, in terms of total volume, we're looking at roughly on average a 22 set mark, which I think is fine for one session. I think that's a fine amount of work. About 20 sets is fine. A little bit less for lower, a little bit more for upper, just because of the difference in difficulty. That's fine. Now, after that, you structure the routine, you add in the categories, you encourage the client to put in um, some exercises which he enjoys. You encourage them to keep exercises for markers of progression. So like the big hitters, like the squat, the stiff leg deadlift, we keep those in for the majority of the time until we eventually need to change. But you know, we, we have a broad, loose structure around everything else. And we kind of base it you know, on, on what the client's needs are, what his history is, and what you think is going to work best for him. After that, you add in the volume per exercise, and this is where you can account for the high volume by using intensity techniques. Now, in practice, <laughs> I do wonder how this video is gonna do because I've got a feeling that a lot of people are gonna be very confused. So I just wanna say, in practice, most people won't know or even need to know the details behind all this. They won't need to know any of this kind of stuff at all. You just do the routine, it works. But the point is, the reason why it works is because coaches like myself put in all that work behind the scenes to create a routine which is balanced, which meets your needs, and is individualized for you as a client because I know you by now and I've been working with you for a few months. So that's why it works. But you don't need to know the whys. But this video is explaining a little bit about the whys. All right. <laughs> I'm going to call it there. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, about this, if you found it interesting or not. And uh, this is the basis of which I write all my ebooks to and I write to do my client routines. It's all based around these concepts, these sort of top down concepts. Um, and yeah, please don't get hung up on it being too much volume for you. If you think it's too much volume for you, it probably is. <laughs> so don't worry. You can still learn from the whole the process. And again, if you don't want to learn from that, fine. You don't have to. But for some people, they'll probably find this video quite interesting. For the rest of you, maybe it's uh, time to flick over to another video. All right, folks, I'll call it there. Take it easy. See you next time.